heard stories about you in the school bus. Uh, fill us in on that story. SD and Faye, Faye and SD and Mama were always going to show me and let they leave the kids home for me to take care of. And I really wasn't that much older than they were. So we decided one day that we was going to get the school bus out. I was going to, we went down and pulled the watermelons, got all the peaches off the trees, <laughs> and put them in the school bus and, and drove down to the corner. We lived back <coughs> on the, off of the main road. So we was down there and I had all these kids. I had Esty, I had, I had Kenneth, and uh, Juanita, and uh, Patsy, no not Patsy, Juanita and Jeannie, Jeannie. and uh, Esty's Kenneth, and Donnie. Anyway, I had, I had to stay home about, with about six of them. So I got them in Papa's school bus and we all put, picked the peaches and the watermelons went down on the highway to sell them. And this guy from came by and we sold every peach that Mama had and every watermelon. So I loaded all the kids up. <laughs> Some of them was kind of going to sleep for me down there. You know, and I was hollering, watermelons and peaches for the sale. And everybody really knew that I'd what I'd done. But they was buying them off of me. <laughs> <laughs> so when I I got back up, I got them all back in the truck. Some of them would sleep back up there, on, you know, just laying out there in the, on the side of the road. We was down the side of the road to make the box. Got them all back in there. When I got back in there and started to drive the school bus into the barn, big old barn we had out there, I got it in the wrong gear. And that thing just busted out through the back of that barn. <laughs> well, I got all the kids out of it, got back up there, and about the time Mom had come home, and I, there I had sold all of Mama's peaches and had got them kids to carry all the watermelons out. Well, they took all the money away from me. I didn't get any money, and then, I, you know, of course, we all got it. But they were always leaving the kids with me. And <laughs> I'd stay home and keep the kids while they went to Shawnee. What, what did Grandpa Holderfield do? He whipped, no, he <laughs> said, he said that what he really used whipping me is already done. He said, Dana, there's no use whipping her. You know, I mean, just talk to her about it, you know, and tell her not to, not to do it anymore. But, but Mama said, well, she just needs, needs to be whipped. She just needs <laughs> to be scolded for this. So I really got a weapon and I had to stay in and I couldn't go anywhere. And I had to milk the cows and do all that kind of stuff, all these chores to pay, you know. But uh, it was really funny. It was a, with that many kids, and you got one that really is kind of mischievous, I guess. It's, Esty said, but what, Lee, what, was funny was Esty was going with Newt. Faye was going with Leland. And they'd take the, Leland worked on the oil field and Newt was farmer. But they'd get me to get out there and wash their old cars that they used, you know, and they was going to give me so much money to wash their cars with. So when I got out there and washed and just cleaned up Faye's car one time and when Leland come to Pick, she went to pick Leland up. She didn't get, she was supposed to give me a dime and she didn't give me any money. <laughs> so I just thought, well, you know, if she's not going, after I went out there and, and washed her old wheels and that old, that car, it was those spoke wheels, those old wooden wheels. Never will forget it. She laughed about it. They to get too. <laughs> well, then, but they wouldn't pay me. So I got back out there and I just got down and made me a mud puddle. <laughs> <laughs> and I just took my hands and just went all up and down that car <laughs> and put the mud all back on the car. <laughs> <laughs> and so then Faye <laughs> came in and she said, I want you to come out here and just see what Vernon Lewis done to that car. Vernon Lewis had done to that car. She just has messed that car up. And Mom said, well, did you give her her dime that you told her you was going to give her? And they said, no. And they said, well, you just have to live with it, you know. I mean, not live with it. Mom didn't say live with it, but she just said, if you're not going to pay her, if you're going to tell her you're going to do something, 
you know, pay her for it. If you're going to give her a dime, give her the dime. But anyway, then Leela comes. So that night I thought, well, I'll fix her. I'll really fix her. So I acted like I was asleep. And they was in the living room. And Esty said, I tell you what, <laughs> I got up and acted like I was walking in sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I really wasn't walking in the sleep. But they, I thought I'd make them think I was. <laughs> and so I put this sheet over my head. <laughs> <laughs> and I went in there. why'd you put the sheet over your head? <laughs> and I said, well, I was supposed to be a ghost because they didn't pay me I was going to haunt them. <laughs> but I, I got over behind the couch first and I reached up over the couch and it was just really weird. And I reached up over the couch and he was just getting ready to kiss me. <laughs> 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 you talking about Leland and Faye? Uh, yeah. And I just took his head and moved <laughs> I tell you, we laughed. I didn't laugh because I really was in trouble. I knew I was in trouble. But I always slept with her. Faye? Faye, yeah. And, uh, but anyway, he gave me my dime. Give me a quarter. Or, you know, for, but I, I'd already put the mud back on the car, and you know, but he went ahead and give me a quarter anyway. But uh, Pop said, "Well, don't ever offer, you know, don't ever tell her you're going to give her something if you don't get to her." But Then as you were growing up, uh, you lived on a farm. The farm was outside Seminole. Yeah. Describe your life on the farm as a child, uh, your daily yeah. activities and that sort of thing, if you, as, you, as you can remember them. Well, Robert, as, Rodney, as I remember, uh, we had your grandfather, your great-grandfather, had um, really he was he had more than a lot of people had he had about 480 acres a half a section of land with a big beautiful I mean we at that time it was a big beautiful white house that set way up on the hill with an orchard out in front of it it was a large as, house as I was growing up it was large it had a, a it had four bedrooms, and then it had a, a big screened-in porch all the way around that thing at the back with a great big red barn. He ground his own cornmeal, made his own sorghum of molasses, uh, and he made it for other people that brought in their cane, you know. Did uh, all the kids help with the chores? And we had to help with them. We had to the, stack the work. Uh, Archie married and he worked for Carter Oil Company, but he built a little house, a little house, it wasn't a little house. He built a house down underneath 
Well, we set up on a hill. And he built a house down, you know, not very far from the big house. And he would help Papa with the farm. Uh, and then uh, Esty lived not very far. The blinds farm was down like a mile from us. But our house sat up there on this hill with apple trees, peach trees, and everything all in front of it, and the driveway went up to it. But my dad was kind of lucky. Uh, he got leased his land and, and did well. And got some oil on it and did real well. Was your family uh, life, was it very close-knit, or uh, did everybody kind of grow up and go their own way? No, we never did do that. We they, we were all very, very close-knitted. And we would have big... The preachers, the holiness preachers, Papa always bought them watches at Christmas time. He bought the first piano that was put in the Pentecost Homeless Church. And then he was always buying the past. They would call them pastors then, or church pastors. Mm -hmm. And he'd buy them watches for Christmas, the wives and the them. He was not stingy at all. He paid his tithes. He said, if you pay your tithes, he taught us that if we paid our tithes, we would get it back in folds. And he seemed to really, really uh, thrive on that. Hmm. But um, anyway, we used to laugh because Mama would get up that morning and the more Sunday mornings to get us all ready for church, and she'd make pies and banana pudding was one of her big things that she did. And the chickens, she'd kill chickens. But with the preacher, we laugh about this, but it was really true. We had a big at that time, we had a big cellar, and Mother had done a lot of canning. Uh, so, but when the preachers would drive up in front of our house, and all the sisters would tell you this, because it's true, them chickens would take out over that, <laughs> that cellar and take off to the back to get away, because they knew they was going to be killed. They <laughs> knew them preachers, and we'd pop and kill hogs, and you'd give them... That was his way of giving them tithes and stuff. Mm -hmm. But he was really, and his name was always, he was a deacon in his church for years and years and years that I can remember. And he helped build that church. But, he, you know, he, but the first Anna that was ever put in that church was put in there by Did, by your great grandpa. Do you consider your uh, uh, childhood years some of the happiest years of your life? They were really happy. Uh, was there any heartbreaks? Uh, I'm sure there were you know, minor our, heartbreaks. Our first there, real there? heartbreak was when we lost and at that time, we had Brother Gord, who was an Indian, he was Indian, and he was a preacher. Our, our biggest heartbreak was when we lost our daddy. You we were lost telling, your great-grandfather, that was our first big heartache. You were telling me this afternoon about another Indian fellow that was a, a close friend of the family. Uh, can you... Shed any light on that? Uh, yeah, Keely Davis Rodney was. If you could, if you could just sit back and visualize what I'm seeing when I'm telling you this, was that we were our our place joined the Indian Mission, and Keely Davis Mama was looked like an Indian. Mama had real black, black hair, long hair, and she did it up in the bun in the back. You're talking about Keely Davis's mother or your mother? No, I'm talking about my mother. Okay. Right. 
Well, of course, Papa was more on the Irish side. Mm -hmm. uh, but Keely Davis would come up there, and he was... He... Papa used to be a little bit jealous of Keely Davis. He'd come up there, and, he, and Papa would say, well, he always manages to come up here, Dana, when I'm not here. But he'd come up there, and I... You know, of course, I was, I'd run out there with my long bloomers on, black bloomers. We wore black bloomers at that time. Mama, they had elastic in the top of them. And I never was really afraid of him. Now, Leon was just a little bit afraid of him, but I really wasn't. And uh, we'd go out there and he'd just say, ow, 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 you know. Well, <laughs> he couldn't really speak our English. So Mama would say, now you kids come back here, come back here. You know, well, me and Leon would go back, and here'd be Tommy, and she'd be crying. <laughs> but when Tommy first came along and was born, to Leon did not want, and we called, we said, well, it's just that Keely Davis just wrapped her up in a blanket and laid her on the front <laughs> porch. <laughs> Leon had this doll he just carried around, so he just named her Tommy. But we... Mama would he he'd come up there to get his rent, I mean his rent money on the land. So anyway, when I, <coughs> I, he got. He, Papa said, "Well, I just won't rent that land off of him anymore." So, because he really was jealous of this old, but he would he'd come up and he just would sit there with his arms like this. You know, and he'd stay and he had this long braided hair, I'll never forget him. So when he he come mama would go out and mama could he thought mama was Indian. Yeah, she was. And she really was. But and we'd say to her, we'd say, Well mama, why don't you claim the Indian? Because we all had the high cheekbones. Every one of us had high cheekbones. Mm -hmm. And she'd say, well, Esty'd say, and Esty'd look, Esty'd really look like Indian. And Tommy, it really popped out Tommy. <laughs> she was really Indian looking. But Esty, and here come Kenneth, see. Well, Newt said that Kenneth was probably Kitty Davis's kid, too. <laughs> Just teasing Papa, you know. But, uh, Tommy was was just black. And, I mean, not black, but I mean she and she had dark complexion. Dark complexion. She had this dark hair. So, but anyway, that's what he he called her. But we grew up with those Indians. But Mom would never admit it hmm. that we were. Well. Um Sounds like you had a very colorful life as a child, uh, with a lot of uh, experiences that uh, people today will never uh, have. I guess we better wrap things up here pretty soon. Uh, what are your What are your interests today? Uh, I know Robert is a a very large part of your life, and uh, uh, rightly so. It may sound funny to a lot of a lot of outsiders, but as I had gotten older, I never wanted to admit my age. I always said I was thirty nine and holding. And you as one, and Dana is one, and Jamie is one, and Sammy is one that says, my jazzy grandmother. Uh, my greatest interest today is that I look forward to being able to see, as Robert graduates, you know, out of high school and going into college. And as Papa always says to me, you 
My great grandkids mean a lot to me. Yeah. And, and my grandkids. Five great grandkids. I have five great grandkids. And everybody looks at me and and says, you know, I can't believe that you know. And I'll say, they'll say, how old is your daughter? And I'll say, oh, she's about, uh, let's see, uh, she's 38, <laughs> 39. And then I, I think to myself, you know, you're, who are you kidding? You know, you're not, you know, I don't really. But what I really look forward to now is keeping my grandkids, seeing Robert grow up as I seen and went through with all the happiness that I went through with Carolyn when she used to travel with her. And she would say, you know, she'd lay down and we'd say, wake up, look at this country, you know, you may never be through here again. Well, I'm sorry, but I was just resting my eyes. So with her and the difference between her and the children and all I lost some children in between these two kids, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but my my really interest now is being able to see. I would love to see Robert grow up and have a family. I'd love to be able to keep my great grandkids. I'd love to be able to. See See my other grandchildren married and having children. Uh, my youngest grandchild was very dear to us, especially to her papa, yeah. because she, you know, he was there when she was born, mm -hmm. and she would not go to sleep when he didn't go down and rock her sleep on her stomach. Jamie Ballou was something else. <laughs> Well, I think we've just about covered uh, this. I know that you have uh, two children and four grandchildren and five great-grandchildren who think you're about the most special person on earth. And we really thank you for this time. Rodney, uh, 